Hi, and welcome to the second part of my series, Magpie Mayhem Volume 2. I've got myself back on this farm, and this is two days later from the first video that you saw. Um, this is a late afternoon, and I've decided to get myself back into this uh, grain store here, where I'm going to try and snipe some more magpies. So now I'm hidden up and in position, I load up the 7-shot magazine of the Theoban Rapid Mark II. And I cycle the first pellet up into the chamber, ready for action. I decided to wear my headgear again today, as I only shot this farm two days ago, and the magpies are going to become very wary once I start firing any shots, and I want to conceal myself as much as possible, not giving away my position. So now I'm all covered up, I just take the rifle, and just make sure I've got a clear visual across the whole rooftop here. So after a 20 minute wait, the first magpie of the day lands up here at 50 yards. And I'm just trying to get the crosshairs settled here for a headshot when the magpie decides to fly off, not allowing me to pull the trigger. Another short wait and this magpie pitches in here at 60 yards and I settle the crosshairs for a headshot. Hell of a shot. And down it goes nicely. And it bounces around there a little bit, typical of a headshot. But that's just nerves, and that magpie is stone dead. Now this is a good hour or so later, and the third magpie of the day lands up here. This again is at 60 yards, and as the magpie is facing me, I decided to go for a heart shot on this one. And once I'm settled, squeeze the trigger and take a perfectly placed shot, and down the magpie goes. And again, this magpie is dead. It's just the magpie's nervous system shutting down that's making the bird react like that. And a few seconds later, and it all settles down. Two hours has passed by now, and this final bird of the day lands up here. The birds are wising up to my tactics now, and are staying right out of my range, so this is going to be the last shot of the day. I centre the crosshairs here on this magpie's head, but for some reason the pellet drops low, and catches him straight in the back of the shoulders. And this is where I decide to get myself out of my hide and make sure that that bird is dead. And as I get round the back of the sheds here, I see the bird has only managed to go 20 yards before dropping stone dead. This is where I was grateful for the extra stopping power of the FAC rated air rifle, creating a bigger shockwave, not allowing this bird to get far. That's the third magpie you saw me shoot there. He managed to fly about 20 yards over this roof. I shot him across the other side and he's pitched down and landed there. So I'm going to have to go and uh, get the farmer now and see if he'll lift me up on the uh, Manitou to grab the other two off the roof. Okay, we'll move on. And there's the first two you saw me shoot, both at 60 yards there. I used the uh, laser rangefinder to check their distance and they were bang on 60 yards there. Um, there was a slight right to left hand breeze as well. So I give them half a mil dot of aim off and took them out clean. So I'm happy with both them shots. I'll just go and try and find the farmer now, like I say, to try and get them down from the roof, as it's always good to clean up after yourselves when you finish today's hunting. So we'll go and find him and see what we can do. So that's the end of our hunt for today, and I've managed to get three magpies, which is not bad going for a short afternoon's hunting. Um, I'm going to leave this farm alone now for another week before I film part three of the series just to let everything settle down. So keep an eye out for that one in a month's time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.